let's be honest watching youtube videos is extremely entertaining those 20 minutes that you're submerged into a youtube video could very well be the best 20 minutes of your day like watching an honest game of hide and seek wait no way <laughs> my heart how about a video of phase rug giving ten thousand dollars to his favorite teacher that's actually yours what yeah and even a fun little vlog you were in brian's video where he tried the super hot wings and yeah. those are less hot than the ones I'm about to try. All these videos might seem pretty straightforward to the average viewer, but let's just say that's not always the case. That's because you only see what we show you. You probably had no idea that all these videos had some deep, dark secrets behind them. And you probably would have never known if I didn't make this video, but I'm making it. Three videos, jaw dropping scenarios, and three secrets. Let's begin. Welcome back to another episode of Three Secrets You Missed in Our Most Viral Videos. I try to space these videos out as much as I can, but every time I upload a video, all my comments say, do another secrets video, do another secrets video. So we're doing another secrets video. There's just so many secrets that you guys don't know about that I'm literally itching to tell. So I'm sure you guys already know how this works by now. I'm gonna be showing you guys three videos with some pretty intense secrets behind them. And I'm gonna explain everything. Starting with number one, fighting phase rugs bullies so in one of brian's recent videos titled i found my teacher in public and gave him ten thousand dollars there was a clip in the very beginning of that video that went like this so anthony actually got expelled from this school and the reason for it you're a w man's for this bro i'm not bro. gonna lie i was actually getting picked on by two kids and anthony fought them for me bro, bro they were saying that you had like a weird shaped nose <laughs> like i mean they're not nose. lying though this is why anthony and i are so close my younger cousin stood up for me got expelled for me bro, bro you like, would have done the same though yeah if i was like at least a little bigger and not built like a pencil bro, i probably would have so yeah the story was about me fighting two guys that were bullying brian and getting expelled from the school but there's a lot more to that story that you guys don't know about i saw a bunch of tiktoks comments even youtube shorts talking about that scenario and i figured i might as well explain the situation so starting off it was actually three people not two so you know in high school everybody has their own groups of people that they hang out with there's the jocks the gamers the, the bikers and the scooterers and the skateboarders and even those who are gang affiliated of course it's high school you're gonna run into that brian had his own set of friends people he'd play basketball with he'd game with i met them myself super honest dope people they would just mind their own business and if you're in high school or you graduated high school you know that there are people out there that hate people that mind their own business. They just want to start trouble. And a few of these people targeted Brian um, because he was trying to do YouTube. They were talking about how he looked. And when this happened, Brian did the smartest thing, which is what everybody out there should do. He ignored it. He laughed it off, kept minding his own business. Brian is very strong mentally, and I'm sure he did not care about these guys whatsoever. So anyways, fast forward, Brian graduates, becomes a big YouTuber, and these guys, we'll call them the Trinamic Trio, they got held back or something. Because when I got to high school, they were seniors. So it's like my first month of high school. And I remember this very, very clearly because it was just outrageous. I'm walking to class, and these three guys walk up to me and they say hey you're brian's cousin right and i'm like yeah i like i am and they say oh yeah we were friends with brian but the way they said it was the most like weirdest like so sarcastically i just knew they were lying they were like yeah we used to be good friends with brian and i was just like all right cool see you bozos and i just walked to my classroom class is over i walk out of class the most insane thing the same three guys are waiting outside of my classroom which is weird because they're seniors and their classrooms were like all the way across the school i'm talking about right when the bell rang like these guys made sure to run out of class and just come right to my classroom so they end up following me to my next class and i remember them saying oh where'd you get your shoes pay less if you guys don't know what pay less is you pretty much get cheap shoes there and there's nothing wrong with it like if if i wanted to shop at payless for my shoes i would shop at payless for my shoes i wasn't wearing payless shoes but even if i was who the f cares but people would make fun of you for wearing payless shoes that's just how people were in the area that i live they're just mean bullies that's when i realized I ran into my first set of bullies. So I'm ignoring them. I walk into my class and they walk in with me. They sit right next to me and they're just staring at me. My teacher calls them out. He's like, yo, you three get out. You guys are not in my class, get out. And they're just laughing. They don't even care. Like these guys were like the class clowns. They didn't care about anything. They grabbed my backpack and they threw it on the floor and they said, get it, 
bitch. And I'm like, dude, I, I literally don't care about you. This is my first month of high school. I'm not trying to have a target on my back by like half of the people in the school thinking that I just go around fighting people. So I'm like, whatever, grab my backpack put it back on the table. My friends are like, don't worry about these guys, but I was actually super heated. Anyways, I'm doing everything in my power to ignore these guys, but then they start saying really personal things. They asked about my younger sister who was about two grades lower than me. And I seriously started wondering, how do these people know this information about me? They obviously were not actually friends with Brian. So anyways, a full six months go by of these guys absolutely trying their hardest to get a reaction out of me. I never reacted to them once. I would laugh. I would walk away. I would never react to whatever they were saying. But one day I go up to Brian and I ask him, hey, do you know these guys? And he's like, yes, I do. Don't engage in anything they're telling you. They're just troublemakers. Don't worry about them. Just ignore them. Don't even talk to them. They're not worth your time. I'm like, all right, whatever. Next day I go to school. I see one of them and I'm like, yo, when you said you knew my cousin Brian, were you talking about you used to bully him? I didn't say it like that, but I said you used to F around with him. And he starts laughing and he's like, nah, man, I would never do that, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, all right, this guy is just so weird. I walk off, I go to PE. They literally walk up to me with a paper. And on that paper is Brian with a Dorito chip drawn on his nose, which now me and Brian laugh about. But back then I was like, yo, someone needs to sock this guy in the face. I laughed it off, I got dressed, I go out to PE. Me and my friends are playing football, and what do you know, these three guys walk up, their daily routine, and they're just talking trash from the sideline, they're calling me fat, da 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 da, you're short, you're fat, oh my god, like, now they're just blatantly trying to bully me. And I tell them, hey, let's play some tackle football. In my head, I'm like, this is my time to hurt them without getting in trouble. And the smallest one, he was around my height, which was like 5'5", five, 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 six in high school. He comes up to me in my face and he says, you don't want to play tackle football with us. I don't know why, but I just pushed the absolute out of him. He falls on the ground. Now I know I have a problem. The other two guys are like, yo, get up, go fight him. I already knew what was about to happen. And I was like, let's just do this. The kid gets up, he had a tennis ball in his hand. I don't know what he tried to do with it. I don't know if he tried to throw it at me or punch me in the face with his tennis ball hand, but he just swung with the tennis ball in his hand. I legit ducked under it and grabbed him and tackled him to the ground. So we fought. Um, I, I hurt this kid pretty bad. And I was boxing at the time. If I tell you guys one thing, boxing does not help you in street fights. But I'll tell you one thing, boxing teaches you how to give a pretty mean right hook, if you know what I mean. This kid was demolished. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not gonna sit here and say, yeah, we fought, no, this kid got demolished. Um, he got up, his nose was like crooked as And you know how Jake Paul was telling Logan Paul, you beat Mayweather, you beat Floyd Mayweather. His friends were telling him, they were like, yeah, dude, you beat him up. Oh my God, you beat him up. I'm just standing there scratchless. My friends are laughing. They're like, bro, good shit. So after this, everything goes downhill for me. This was a pretty stinky thing to happen. I get dressed. I walk out of the locker room. And what do I see right when I walk out of the locker room is my only two best friends in high school. The only two people that I knew dapping this guy up, if you don't know what that means, like, you know, when people do that, doing that to the guy that I just beat up laughing like, oh, yeah, yeah, good stuff, bro. Good stuff. And I'm like, bro, you were supposed to be my friend, bro. Then everything started clicking the way that these guys knew everything about me. Yeah. Turns out that they were all pretty good friends. So those were my only two friends. I was like, all right, cool. I don't care about you guys. Like, whatever. This is not high school musical. I'll go make new friends. So anyways, now I'm by myself. Uh, next day I go into school and it turns out that one of my old friends was talking trash about me saying that I had lost the fight. You know, in high school, everything gets to your head. You're like, no, nah, I didn't lose a fight, blah, blah. This is a moment where my friends have already betrayed me. I'm already heated. And then I hear some guys talking trash about me. So I go up to him, I confront him. And this guy's huge. I'm talking six feet tall, linebacker on the football team. And this guy's like, nah, bro, I didn't say anything about you. And I'm like, all right, don't ever put my name in your mouth. Squashed. I leave. This is around lunchtime. Some guy comes up to me and says, hey, this guy wants to fight you. I'm like, all right, bro, let's just go. We go into the bathroom. It's me and this guy toe to toe in a very small bathroom. This guy takes up like half of the bathroom. He's telling me, you hit me first. I said, no, you hit me first. I'm not going to get expelled. And then right as he's saying, no, you, I just punch him in the face as hard as I can. This guy moves back to the urinal. I try to pick him up, but his back is against the wall. So he starts repeatedly punching me in the back of my head. I legit saw stars. I'm not going to lie. From that point, I was fighting blind. I got hit in the face so many freaking times. 
if you were watching that fight from the outside it looks like a normal fight but if you were in my shoes i was getting absolutely pummeled i had a huge like gash over my eye i was bleeding really bad i went home my mom said what the hell happened i said i got hit in the face with a baseball then my dad asked me i told him the same thing and he said i'm not stupid and he asked me if i won the fight and i said Psh, yeah i didn't win that fight but hey I handled my business. I'm like, dude, all right, this is done. I go to school the next day. I get called into the principal's office. I'm like, I already know what this is about. Jesus Christ. He's like, we know that you fought. Da -da 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 -da. We already spoke to them about this. And if you get into one more fight, you're expelled from the school. I'm like, wow, my parents would love to hear that. So now I'm on my best behavior. I'm like, dude, I'm not even gonna look at nobody. I'm just gonna walk to class. Keep in mind, I wasn't trying to start no problems with nobody, except actually probably the second guy. But I, realistically, I was just trying to mind my own business i was told that if i got into another fight not only would i be expelled but i would be sent to a school called twain mesa now this school is the worst of the worst i'm talking 40 people only only 40 students four teachers four classrooms maximum security i'm talking about metal detectors security guards all over the campus you're not allowed to bring your own pen or pencil you have to use the ones they supply to you which are chained to the desk you want to know why because they don't want you to go and stab someone it was safe to say i didn't want to end up there so anyways later that day two kids from the trinamic trio come up to me so at this point they've accepted the fact that i have beat up their friend the first guy and they say you and your cousins are b words don't let me catch any of you in the streets they also said that when my little sister arrives at that school later that year that they would make sure that she gets bullied i didn't like any of those sentences so without any thought I just sock the guy that's closest to me right in the face. I don't remember much of that moment, but I was punching him repeatedly. His friend did not jump in because I think he thought it was like a one-on-one. -on -one. But right after I got in like four good punches on this guy, I just went right to the other guy and just started punching him. It was very bad. You wouldn't think it was a high school fight if you saw it, but uh, these kids were pretty banged up in the face. I don't know how, by the grace of God, I left with just a few scratches here and there the teacher asked them what happened and if they didn't tell them then they wouldn't be allowed to graduate again that's what i'm guessing happened and so word got out they saved themselves and i ended up at twain mesa where i found some of the coolest people i've ever met in my life i never encountered any forms of bullies over there i maintained a 4.0 gpa straight a's i'll show you guys a picture of my transcript right here i got offers from multiple law schools which was amazing but fortunately for me that's when i started my youtube channel and things were looking really good so yeah that's the story about ryan's bullies and why you should never bully anybody in high school let's move on so now let's move on to story number two. So I'm sure some of you guys have seen this video right here. Okay, wait, Anthony, you for the thumbnail? Uh, <laughs> I got the look on your head. <laughs> you what? look like a garden gnome. Bro, maybe I have to shock you like this. <laughs> yeah, please, Anthony. I'm doing the most for the thumbnail. That was the exact day that I got fired from my job because I was filming with Brandon. A lot of you guys know the story of how I got fired when I was with Brandon. We briefly explained it, but we didn't go into detail. <laughs> Can we please hear the voicemail of you getting fired? Yeah. Guys, you won't believe it. Yeah, it's bad. I'm, I'm at the mall with Anthony <laughs> after he ditched his shift. He texted his manager one minute before his shift was supposed to start. We were at the mall. It was pretty bad. And he texted his manager saying, hey, I can't make it to work today. It Sorry. Like so we're chilling at the mall, having a good time. You know, he just ditched his shift. By the way, his manager never accepted his, oh, I'm, I'm not showing up today. She never replied. And it's actually a lot worse than you guys know. So coming out of high school, some stuff happened. Pretty much I was not a YouTuber anymore. I had no money and I had to get a job. I asked my older sister, hey, can you get me a job at the grocery store you work at? She's like, yeah, let me see what I can do. She got me an interview and I got the job. And my job was pushing carts and bagging groceries, which there is nothing wrong with. It just was not the job for me. I did not feel comfortable there. The employees were super old and they were telling me stories about World War II and stuff. And I didn't feel like I belonged there. So I quit and I found another job at a trampoline park. This is where all my friends were working at the time and I was like, hey, this would be fun. It's a trampoline park. I love trampoline parks. I'm gonna go and work there. Little did I know I was very wrong. The main problem was that uh, a lot of kids went there. These kids would come up to me and say, hey, you're that guy from Face Drugs videos. You're Face Drugs cousin, which made me so happy. I love hearing that I was being recognized and people were like, I see you in Face Drugs videos. You're that guy from Face Drugs videos. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's me. What's up, man? And then they would be like, what happened? 
Why are you working here? Didn't you used to be a YouTuber? Alongside people taking secret pictures of me, laughing, joking about me, which if you know me, you know that I don't really care about that. It was just really awkward. It made me have a whole new perspective on nine to five jobs. We're all in this world trying to make a living, trying to help our families, and there's nothing wrong with working any type of job, except when you sell your body on the street. That is a very haram job. So anyways, I had no money at all. I was living paycheck to paycheck. I hate saying this, but um, I was driving my mom's car. I didn't even have money to fill up my tank with gas, so I would legit have to ask my parents to borrow some money. But you guys know, I did not let that get to me. I stayed happy. I was always laughing. I was always smiling no matter what my situation was. But as I was working, my life started to get a lot busier. I'm talking work-wise. All I was able to do was work, go home, sleep. And even then I was only making like $300 every two weeks, which is nothing. One day I wake up, I get a text from Brandon that says, hey, can you help me set up this video? I need to go to the mall and pick up some stuff. I had work in a couple of hours but i loved helping with youtube videos telling me hey we're filming a video if you can help us with this was like telling a five-year-old that you're taking them to disneyland it's just the most amazing thing the process is amazing i fell in love with it from the very first video i ever filmed and i had a hard time passing that up but i also realized i can't risk losing my job because then i'll have nothing so i decided hey i'm just gonna call in sick today i'll go in tomorrow and work overtime i called my boss no answer i texted three of my managers no reply i said hey i'm feeling sick i don't think i could come in today no reply for two hours straight. I ended up doing something very stupid that I'm a little ashamed of. I just went to the mall with Brandon. I didn't want to lose my job, but I still wanted to help Brandon with his YouTube video. So I made what seemed like an easy decision. Brandon had no idea that I was doing this because if he did know, then he would have just told me, yo, you know, just, just go to work. So I didn't tell him. I get a text from my coworker saying, hey, you need to come into work right now or they're going to fire you if you're not at work in an hour. This is as I'm helping Brandon with his video. And I started thinking to myself if I go back to work now that's what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of my life and eventually no one is ever gonna ask me for help on a YouTube video ever again I most likely will only be able to see my family once or twice a month and I was having so much fun in just those couple of hours with Brandon that I realized I don't care if I get fired sure I'll have no money but I'll figure it out so about an hour later I get this voicemail this is random voicemail <laughs> I'm giving you a call to let you know that unfortunately we are choosing to terminate you due to how unreliable you've been this within the last couple weeks. Time. Um, you can come pick up your separation paper and your final paycheck is here Threw waiting for you. All we need is your name tag and your uniform. Regretted. If you have any questions, just give me a call. Thanks, Anthony. So Anthony had to go back and get his final paycheck. His final paycheck. He had I to go pick it, it up. It. How much was it? It was like $32. And, and Anthony was so like, I don't know what I was he was. I pissed off. So I took the paycheck and I ripped it and I threw it in the trash. You ripped the paycheck. Hey, Anthony, would those $32 come in handy right about now? Huh? And I just had to tell Brandon like, hey, this is what happened. And he was just like, dude, you are an idiot. Like, why would you not go to work? Like, and I just said like, bro, I don't want to do that. Like, I just want to help with videos. I'm not going to lie. Times were extremely difficult. I would have to ask my mom for money a lot of the time. I have no shame in saying that because that's really what happened. And I knew in my head that I would pay her back 10 times over. It was extremely difficult living that way and being surrounded by super successful people and just having to put a smile on my face so that no one asked me, hey, are you good? What's wrong? I didn't want people to look at me as weak because nobody wants help from a weak person. So I just made myself like, yeah, everything's fine. Everything's cool. But I was really going through it. Brandon and Brian would constantly ask me, hey, why don't you start making videos again? And I would always shut them down because I thought to myself, who would want to watch a struggling 19 year old cousin of a famous YouTuber? But hey, here we are now almost 1.1 million subscribers deep, and I'm truly at the happiest point of my whole entire life. I never thought that I would ever be here and to be supported by so many people. That was all because I ended up starting my channel again, and this time I just focused on being myself, making people laugh. Everything worked out in the end. It was a very easy decision for me to get fired, and it was times like this that I wanted my life to be filled with. Go. He's gonna open it. He's, He's walking in. So
on my channel. He's actually one of the smartest people I know. Really? 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 This is the first ever chug rug made. You're lying. First Wait, ever. No. Yeah. No, it's not. It Why is. are you giving this to me? Because you're the creator no, of it. Where was this? In my house. And I found you're it. You're giving it to me? Yeah. I love you so much. Okay, now look at the bottom. What are you saying? Wait, what are you saying? You have your own code for G Fuel no, now. I don't. <laughs> No, I don't. I swear. No, I don't. No, I don't. Yeah, listen. No, I don't. Why are you? Hold doing? up, hold up. So people use Coach Sherman on any G Fuel product, you get a commission from it now. <laughs> oh no. Oh. 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 Anyways, let's move on to the final secret. Number three, the hide and seek video in the team house. So as you guys probably know by now, me and Brandon used to have a team house about two years ago. Crazy to say that was two years ago. Feels like it was a month ago. Living in this house was Brandon, Jessica, Mandy, Clint, Rami, and of course myself. Now this is around the time that I took challenge videos extremely seriously. I did not like losing at all. And no, for those wondering, I did not care about the prize. It was never about the prize. You can ask anybody. I have almost never accepted a prize at the end of a video. I would always either give it to the other contestants or I would say, hey, it's fine. Give it to someone who needs it. All I wanted was to be the opponent that nobody could beat. I'm so competitive. I'm not the best at everything, but I try my best at everything. I never wanted anyone to beat me, even if I was going up against my own family. I wanted everybody to work for their win. Isn't that the point of a challenge? So everybody in the house had an amazing idea. Let's play hide and seek in the new house that we just moved into. Amazing idea. I am a world champion at hide and seek. So we start the video and I find my spot. Just relax, man. Can you close that door? Here. Oh my gosh, okay. Can you go Oh, the camera. <laughs> Thank you. Immediately, I'm thinking this is the best spot in the house. There's no way that anybody would check the place I was in. Now, what some people don't know is that hiding in a cabinet for almost an hour is very dangerous. It is so hard to breathe and it's so hot. Check out this clip of me doing the same thing in Brian's video. I have a feeling it's gonna get really hot in here. I just hope he doesn't find me though. When I tell you it's literally a sauna, I'm not joking. It's like Anthony won, but like, does anyone know where he's hiding? No, I have no idea. Oh, you guys know? What? Okay, now that he's the winner, it's done. Where is he? Hold on. Are you sure it's done? Look, Rami, you, Kaylin, and Junior's right there. So, it's all done. So, Anthony, if you want to come out. <laughs> Anthony. Yes. It's done. It's done. Okay, go to my favorite spot in the whole house. The Drake painting? The bar. Oh, the bar. The bar. <laughs> okay, okay. Dude, no freaking way! No way. Wait, what? Dude, where is Anthony? What is Anthony, he? What is he, a magician? Out. Imagine he poops like right here. <laughs> oh! Oh! oh my god! Get me out of here right now! Get me out of here. Grab the GoPro, grab the GoPro! I actually can't breathe. Yeah, Dude, the lemon in it. Dude, you were in there the whole time. Oh my god. Bro, no, holy, God, you're so bro, look at that, he's so, this is dedication for a hide and seek. Now you don't have to do a dare. So yeah, it takes a lot of dedication. Anyways, you can see Brandon walks past me multiple times. He even looks directly in my area and does not find me. I want to find Anthony first. And what better way to look for Anthony than the bar. He has to be at the bar.
Uh, you smell Anthony on him? I definitely smell Anthony's DNA on him. Yup. Anthony was here, but he's not hiding here right now. Anthony was here, but he's not hiding here right now. The bar is clear. Nobody has the ball. Meaning that I most likely was supposed to win the challenge. And for those of you who haven't seen the video, the first person to get caught was supposed to hold a plank position for the entire duration of the hide and seek game. Now the first person to get caught was Clint. Hey Clint! <laughs> yes! Clint! Hey! We got one! Dude, <laughs> dude, you're the first person I found. Come here, Clint. Can you, uh... <laughs> okay, Can you... Clint. But little did I know that Clint was about to do something that would cause an argument between us for weeks to come. Clint was in his plank position and he was struggling, sweating, red face. <gasps> Clint, you look really ripe, like a tomato. Tomato, tomato. And Brandon goes up to him and he says, hey, Anthony's being really cocky. If you tell me where he's at, you will be allowed to stop planking. Yo, Clint, Anthony's being really cocky. <laughs> if you give me one hit for Anthony, you don't have to plank anymore. And what does Clint do? Bar, bar, bar. <laughs> <laughs> Go, go, go. <laughs> he tells Brandon where I'm at. Brandon walks up to the bar. He looks around. He still doesn't find me. Oh, this Behind? What the hell is this guy? It's quite tricky. Me. And then eventually he opens the cabinet, which no one would think to check because it's so small. No one said I was a puzzle master. <laughs> oh! oh my god! No way! No way! <laughs> my heart! My heart! You can outplay it, man. <laughs> Shout out to Brandon, I love him so much. And I'm pissed. Like, you guys can't tell in the video, but I was mad. This was unfair. I lost. I was supposed to win that video. I was on a winning streak. I hadn't lost in Brian's videos. I hadn't lost in Brandon's video in like five times in a row. All that to be ruined by Clint. Out of pettiness, I started talking trash to Clint. I was saying, why TF would you do that? Why would you tell him where I'm at? You not wanting to do the plank is not my problem. You should have found a better hiding spot. Why do I have to pay for your mistake? And everybody was laughing. They were like, guys, shut up. It's hide and seek. Stop taking it so seriously. And even Clint was laughing because I'm telling you, no one was taking it seriously because how could someone be mad over hide and seek? But I just kept going and going and going. And in the end, I didn't talk to Clint for almost a week straight then i realized i was overreacting and i apologized to clint and he's like you're good and uh everything was fine but i wasn't sorry and i would do it again you filthy cheater uh, sherman 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 nice of you to mention that how could i forget snitching on you and hide and seek when we all moved in together it was a fun game i was the first one out and you know what a promise was made to me where i could quit on my planking, if I snitch, snitching on you is something I'm probably never gonna do. Actually, scratch that. I'm never gonna do that again because you never let things go, Sherman. But all in all, it was a fun game of hide and seek. Yeah, that was a moment a lot of people didn't see, so a little insight, but at the same time, it was a good time. We had a fun game together, no more pettiness. Sherman, I'm sorry I snitched on you. I'll never do it again, brother. Anyways, that was just a little secret that you guys had no idea about in that specific video that needed to be brought to light. I'm giving a $10,000 reward to anybody who finds Clint and serves him to me. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, please drop a thumbs up. And if you guys made it this far, comment the words L bullies. Let me know in the comment section below if you guys would like me to make more of these videos. I have a blast making them. They're there's an unlimited amount of secrets that you guys don't know about that I would love to talk about. So if you guys are enjoying it, please let me know down below. With that being said, it is your boy Sherman the Vermin, and I'm out. Peace.